Okay, when we start looking at combining random events um, and calculating the mean, variance, and standard deviation of these um, combined events, um, it's important that we show that the events are independent on one another. Independent meaning that um, the probability of one happening does not affect the probability of the other event happening. Um, and the easiest way to show that is that the probabilities are equal no matter which one happens first. And so like here's an example of a roll of green die 100 times and want to compare the results to a red die that's rolled 80 times. Would these events be independent? And I hope you realize now by now that flipping coins or rolling dice or um, uh, uh, predicting where a ball lands on a, a roulette machine, they are independent events because the ball, the coin, the um, die does not remember what happened in the event before. So the probabilities do not change each time I roll the dice or each time I flip a coin. Those are always considered independent events. However, if I draw three cards from a deck and want to compare them to the next three cards in the deck, they would not be considered independent because the probabilities would not be equal. The first three cards would have a certain probability. The next three cards would be different because now I have three fewer cards in the deck. So the, the events there would not be independent of one another, okay, because the probabilities are not equal. Um, so that's a big idea in statistics is to be able to show independence, and it's something that we've got to be consistent at and be able to show at all times. So let's take a look at an uh, example where we actually um, have two random variables and we want to see what happens when we combine them in some way of situation. Here's an example where we have a brother and a sister who are uh, both own tours. Uh, Pete owns Jeep Tours and Aaron owns um, Aaron's Adventures. And they want to combine their business into one and they want to see um, what the effect on their business would be. Okay, so the, a lot of the, um, to help us determine the effect of, of combining random events, we want to calculate the mean, the variance, and eventually the standard deviation of putting these two events together. So we collect some data from um, Pete, and we see here, and um, that's what this table represents, is the information from Pete. And you can see here that um, this probability of, in any one day, of having two passengers is 15%. Three passengers is 25%. Up to as many as six passengers happens 5% of the time. Okay? And so you remember, um, to calculate the uh, mean of this, we would multiply the probability by each of the um, number of passengers, by each of the corresponding probabilities. So 2 times 0.15. 3 times 0.0, I mean 0 0.25, and 4 times 0.35, etc. And then we would add them up, and that would give us the mean, which is already calculated for us as 3.75. And remember, the standard deviation is kind of a similar idea in that we would take each of these um, numerical values, the number of passengers, and subtract the mean, square it to get rid of the um, positive and negative symbols, and then multiply it by its corresponding probability. And then we would add that up for each of the events. So, for example, for two passengers, we would go 2 minus the mean, 3.75, get some sort of negative number, square that, and then multiply it by 0 0.15. Do the same thing for 3, 4, 5, and 6, and again, add them up. And that would be our variation. And again, to get the standard deviation, we would square root that. So our standard deviation would be 1.090. So if I did the same thing with Aaron's um, data, um, where she has an adventure to, uh, tours, and you can see here she gets two to five passengers. She doesn't um, ever get up to six, and there's her probability distribution. Again, we can check to make sure it's legitimate by noticing here. Yeah, yeah, sure enough, these add up to one, so that's all possible outcomes. And we can do the same thing and calculate the mean of hers, and she averages 3.1 passengers on any given day with a standard deviation of 0.943. Remember, the standard deviation is defined as the average error. Okay, so just keep reminding yourselves that that's what standard deviation is. Okay, so we have two events, and then we want to, again, we want to combine that to see if these two, or this brother and sister, actually put their business together, what would the mean and the standard deviation be of the combined business? Well, the mean is very intuitive. 
If you notice here, if we put Pete, Pete and Aaron's job, um, business together, remember Pete had a mean of 3.75 and Aaron had a mean of 3.1. We would combine that and say, well, their mean would then be the sum of those two numbers. So they would expect to average 6.85 passengers per trip, one on a Jeep and one in uh, Aaron's vehicle. So the idea is that whenever you want to combine um, the means of random variables, it's real simple. You just add them together. Okay, so the mean of one plus the mean of the other would be the combined mean, okay? So if you notice the notation here, u of x would be one event, x being um, Pete's um, Jeep Tours, and the mean of y would be Aaron's Adventures. And if we combine that, we get the total mean, and that's what the t represents, is the total or the um, uh, combined event, which we sometimes call expected value. So anytime you see the, the word expected value, immediately associate that with that with the word mean in has the same definition. So basically you just gotta add them up, okay? But now we wanna see what the variability is. Now remember, they both had different standard deviations, and so um, we wanna figure out what the standard deviation of the combined event would be. So again, this is where the idea of independence is very important. Before we can combine any events, we have to make sure that one event is independent of the other. And in this situation here, um, we would imagine that the number of passengers that come into Be Pete's Jeep's tours is independent of the number of passengers that shows up at Aaron's Avengers. Just because Pete has five passengers show up one day doesn't influence how many passengers are going to show up on Aaron's. These are two different businesses in different locations. They are not in. They are. Um, are not influenced by one another. So we would assume that these are independent events. When they are independent events, then we can actually combine the means and combine the standard deviations and get those combined values for us, okay? So we always gotta check for independence. Um, usually it requires just a little logic, looking at the situation and seeing if one is related to the other in any way, shape, or form. So if we let um, t equal the number of passengers that p has, which is x, plus the number of passengers that um, Aaron could have, being y, and we looked at all possible uh, um, uh, values. So if you look here at the first row here, um, if Pete had two passengers with a probability of 0.15, and Aaron had also two passengers, and remember her probability was 0.3, then the combined mean would be 4, and the combined probability would be 0.15 times 0.13, or 0 0.05, 4, 5, sorry. And we would do that for every possible combination, okay? And that would give us, if you notice here, that would give us, if we added all those up, that would give us the variance, okay? So remember, how do we get the, um, what do we do with the variance to get the, the standard deviation, the idea is that we can then square root that value. So the square root of this value would then give me my standard deviation of the combined event. Okay? So if you look at the previous example, you can realize that the combined variance would just be the sum of the variances of the two events by themselves. So we just can again find the um, combined variance by simply adding the variances. But the trick is to remember that you're adding the variances, which is not the standard deviation. So if you look here, this is the combined variances, and it's the uh, um, standard deviation of our first event, which in this case was x squared, because remember that's how you get variance, plus the standard deviation of y, which is Aaron's adventure squared, and we would add that together and get the standard deviation of the combined or the total event squared. And if you notice, this looks very, very similar to this formula here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which... If you remember from geometry and algebra, is known as the Pythagorean theorem. So it's kind of uh, helps us to memorize this if we realize that there's a relationship here between um, finding the standard deviation of combined events. It does involve a formula that's very much related to the Pythagorean theorem. It's just that we have to square each of the standard deviations to get the variances, and then we can simply add the variances together. So remember, you can always add the variances, but you can never add the standard deviations, okay? So to kind of sum this up and include this on your notes, is if we want to combine two random events, and we want to find the combined averages, um, if we are, even if we are subtracting, we want to find the difference, then we would simply subtract 
the two means to find the combined mean. And but please note that you would still use the Pythagorean theorem, which in, does involve addition, to find the combined variances. And then you could square root that to find the combined standard deviation. So to sum up and make this as simple as I can, whenever you want to combine two random variables or two random events, um, to find the combined mean, you need to add, just simply add or subtract the means, whatever it is that you're trying to do in the problem. You can simply combine the events just like you are, um, uh, I mean, combine the means just like you would combine the events. However, when you go to figure out the new standard deviation, you have to square each of those standard deviations and add them to get the combined variance. And again, the, the easiest way to remember that is to realize that you have to use a form of the Pythagorean theorem, where A and B is the standard deviation of each of the events by themselves, and C would be the combined standard deviation. So again, if you use the Pythagorean theorem, you can then screw your final answer to uh, the screw to the combined variance to find the combined standard deviation. Okay, so that would be the last step is to square root whatever this value is to get the standard deviation of the combined event. And we will see an example of this in class um, next, time, next time. Okay, so make sure you complete your notes on the, for this, um, these videos uh, and um, include this in your composition notebook and use this to study for the AP exam.